Welcome, welcome to our discussion today on warts. Please take a second and share this out there or tag your friends that you think might be interested in this topic or if any of your friends have kids with little warts on their fingers or toes or looking for solutions, feel free to tag them in this post even if it's already over. Um, feel free to ask us questions too. We like questions. We like to we like to see what we can do to help and um, you, other people can comment and say what's worked for them and, and let's, it'll be great. <laughs> so hopefully we have audio. Um, feel free to comment if you can't hear us and we'll <laughs> we'll see if we can fix see what it. we can do. She'll see if she can fix That's it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So warts, what causes warts? Oh, the human papilloma virus, HPV is what they claim causes it. Triggers unusual extra cell growth. So outer layers of skin become thick and hard, unsightly bumps. You know, some of them are actually flat against the skin. But what I find interesting is that there's actually over 100 strains of the human papilloma virus. That cell overgrowth that's created by these strains, some of them are cancerous. And so that's why it's really important that if you have warts, that you try to deal with them, you try to get, and if you can't, that you go have them checked out. I'm not going to, maybe I am. <laughs> HPV, 100 strains of it. More than. All I'm going to mention is the word vaccines. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Do your own homework. Okay. See. How are you going to make a vaccine for? Hundred strains for a hundred different strains. Anyway, interesting. I don't, know. I don't know either, so I will be looking at. But it. new warts should definitely not be ignored because, and especially if it's not responding to treatment at home. Now, notice what she said there: new warts should not be ignored. Too often, when someone is diagnosed with cancer later, there were at least one or more new warts not very far from the area. Um, do not ignore a, war a warp, particularly if it's unusually shaped, although I've seen perfectly normal looking round warts that have been there previously, just behave differently just before a cancer diagnosis. Uh, break. Yeah. So, it just so got it just got puffier, it got unusual shaped, it got strange, even though it had been there for years. Yeah. Real quick, let's go over what makes you susceptible to warts. Why do some people get them and some people don't? I've actually, as far as I know, never had a wart. I was wondering about that. When I was driving here, actually, if I ever had one, it's been as a kid. Didn't you have one across your? No, oh, that was a. Um, I was thought a, was a. A freckle that got all weird. Yeah, and funky a freckle on that me. got weird. Yeah. Anyway, but no, I don't think I've ever had a wart. I had a son who had a wart, and I've had lots of little neighbor kids that have had warts that we have done different things. I have some experience with warts, but no personal experience, <laughs> thankfully. I still have one right back here. <laughs> I have a couple. So everybody's immune system responds differently. Um, and it's kind of according to your own general immune health, but not everybody who comes in contact with the human papillomavirus will develop warts. One of the interesting things about warts is that as a general rule, children and teens are more likely to get them, which has caused a lot of speculation about the immune Why? systems, yeah. you know. Maybe they're just not as developed, they haven't been exposed to as many things, and so their defenses are not quite as built up. Well, and that, you know not quite as built up against, that's an interesting corollary, 100 yeah. strains of human papillomavirus, and we're noticing that children are more susceptible to the one that causes warts. It raises some questions in my mind as to what yeah. else they're susceptible to. Persons with chronic illnesses, especially chronic skin conditions, are also at greater and that, risk for warts. That makes sense to me because anybody with a chronic illness is going to have, their immune system There's is going to be down. System yep, that's already going to be happening now. Really quickly, we want to go over the different types of warts. <laughs> Obviously, the common wart, and they do have Latin names, which I shall not even attempt. But you well, can I if you probably want to. will have to put on glasses <laughs> to do. <laughs> I know how to pronounce the last part, Bulgaris. Bulgaris. Yeah, there there's a debate. There you say, but it is just as properly pronounced as there you say a e. <laughs> hmm. I mean, if you look up the Latin name of plants, the proper way. Someday I'm going to put that video up that I have prepared that thing for the essential oil Latin names, you know, oh, yes. because it's such a hoot. Um, one, one guy telling me how to pronounce those names an experienced and, and well-known person. He said, what he does is when he's the most experienced person in the room, everybody pronounces it his way. And when he's not, he pronounces things the same way as the leading professor. In the room. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, you can, <laughs> whatever. I've sat in classes where everybody argued about that till it got Doesn't ridiculous. Really matter. <laughs> yeah. Latin's a dead language guys. And now anyway, it's killing me. <laughs> common warts are really tiny. They're usually not any bigger than the side, the head of a pin. They're, they're 
fairly small. They might get the size of a small pea, but mostly they're tiny. Common warts are tiny. Yeah. And they often have little seeds that you can see. On our original picture, um, you could clearly see the seeds in one of the warts that you've probably been staring at for the last 10 minutes while you waited for us to start. These are actually not seeds. No, they're just tiny little blood vessels. So that and that does kind of make them a seed since warts are carried through the blood system. I mean, in a way it does, yes. In a way, yes, but te but technically they're not actually seeds. Warts don't grow from seeds. They're <laughs> not plants. <laughs> That's funny. That's not how they spread. Another the a really um, common one to see is one called planter warts. And planter warts are probably, if you've ever come across warts, they're probably the one that you've actually seen. Well, they're, and they're um, common on the feet, on yeah. the bottom of the feet. Not so. plantar fascius. That's with the plantar surface. Yeah, that's the why they're surface called surface. plantar. And that's actually where my son got his. Although all the little neighbor kids that I've treated for warts that have come over to my house and, and we've tried different things have been all over their hands. Um, I had one little girl who had over 40 between her two arms. I've had a planter and wart on my foot for warts. years and years and years. I would periodically dig it out and think I had it out of there and, finally got and I finally did I soaked my feet in deliverance for and haven't time. seen it now for I soaked for a different reason but the planter wart's been missing now for four or five years so <laughs> worked for me I didn't so, even think about it until I started writing this thing on warts and, and I like, checked the minute, bottom of my foot it's, gone. Hey, it's not there so. that's funny yeah <laughs> but my son's um my son's was actually the first wart. I had all these little kids coming over and we were trying different things and they were shrinking and they were going away. And his was the first one that I could not actually get rid of. And part of that is because I expected him to deal with it and I don't think he was consistent. <laughs> consistent follow and part through. of that is because I didn't have the last piece and that is a lot of times warts will go systemic and the virus will actually live in the neural pathways or the blood of the body. And so I, it just... I was impossible to beat. We're going to talk about you about um, some herbal things that we have found for people who try all the topical stuff and it doesn't get rid of the warts. There are some internal cleansing and things that you need to do in order to finally clear that up. We'll get there. But I want to talk about these planter warts for just another minute. Okay. It says, perhaps it is the pressure applied by walking or standing that causes these warts to grow inward. All of, For most of my life, um, when I would buy moccasins without soles, I would mm. wear out the instep of that right foot because I pronated my foot that direction. Oh. Now, when we got into craniosacral and they corrected that and that problem with my tailbone. You know? So what was it? Was it the deliverance or the different way I walk or the fact that both those things happened at the same time or, you know, yeah. all uh -huh. I can tell you is after having that thing for 30 years, it's so gone. A so. planter wart is different from a common wart because it is flat and it grows into the skin, whereas common warts tend to grow outward and become bumps. Which is nice. It's easier to get rid of them if you don't have to. Yeah, that's true. Um, the <laughs> planter warts are typically the ones that you end up in the doctor's office trying to dig out or freeze off or burn. Um, these are painful. You options. have had a wart. <laughs> you just don't remember it. Oh, I, I do. I'm proud. I, I took, wondered. I almost like this, like this. I of a took memory. you to a doctor. You were three or four, maybe five, and you had a planter wart on your foot. Did I get it burned or frozen? They, or? they cut it out. I don't remember. I was it's yeah. like almost there. I'm like, I don't it think I've ever had it. It wasn't very big, and I thought the longer I ignore that, the bigger deal it's going to be. Hmm. Must not have been too big a deal. Interesting. <laughs> you know, yeah. so they're somewhere in the back of your with mind. planter warts. I almost always just start with the internal cleanse. Just, I mean, absolutely. The common warts you can usually just get rid of with topical things that we're going to talk about essential oils, but with with the planter wart, I'm doing the topical stuff, but it's hard to keep stuff on the bottom of your foot because you're walking and wearing it off. So it's a lot harder to keep it on there. And I just do the internal cleanse at the same time. Just get it over with. Okay. <laughs> There's another kind of wart that's actually called a flat wart. Oh, and this one is, it's a, it's a small patch. But it's usually a bunch of individual bumps. Well, and you know, and this, they're tiny. Well, and the problem with them is, is that they are viral. So yeah. if they're on the face, which is which a is common place come. for them. Or the back of the hands. Um, shaving, anything that you know, face. washing oh, your face with a wash rag. <laughs> causes spread them to it, spread. You know, watching, yeah, they, they spread. I mean, just washing your arms, rubbing up and down, you know, you can spread them pretty nasty. And they're different from the common warts because they are flat. Yep. Little rough patches of just skin, usually an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. They're very tiny but they will spread all over the back of the neck or across so the face. So why did we decide to talk about warts? This is a good question. I don't actually know the answer. Because I got three or four <laughs> phone calls and I got several pictures sent to me in the same oh, time frame yes. about various warts. That's why we <laughs> typically choose any topic that we choose is we're getting more questions okay. about it. Okay. There's also a wart called a filiform wart. And these are 
Um, they're very distinctive looking. They're, they're spiky. It's almost one I, I should have Googled it and put a picture in here, but looking at pictures of warts, just even to find one for this picture <laughs> wasn't really all that much fun. So go look up a file form. Anyway, they can they're, be they're pink, very weird. They yeah. can be yellow. They can, they can be flesh color, but they can be pink, yellow, brown, and they're little clusters and they're spiky. They they're tend to funky. cluster along the eyelids. And, yes, and that's the one. Very right annoying here. when they're clustered along the eyelid. You know, there's been speculation that they spread because of sharing mascara with a schoolmate, you know, oh, or different, a... different things like that. So hmm. um, it is, you have to remember, these are viral, yeah. <laughs> papilloma virus, you know, and so spreading them is a problem. Eyelids, lips, or around the nose is a common place. These are nasty looking little things. I they're can't often... even imagine having one poking out of the side of my eye, you know. Well, and they're not typically very painful, but they can, if they get to a fold of your skin, it can get irritated just from being rubbed. Um, and they're often called uh, facial warts. Yes. Instead of filiform warts, just yep. throw that out there. Okay. But if you want a picture, you're going to have to use the word. <laughs> There's one more type of warts, which we're not going to go deeply into today, and that is <laughs> genital warts. And it, a blog wouldn't be complete without them. Um, it's a sexually transmitted thing. And, and they are warts. They are I mean, warts. That's what they are. And a lot right. of the same things that we're talking about would work, but you need to work with somebody. It's a tender probably. area, so be a little careful with, <laughs> with <laughs> dilute yeah, your Yeah, that kind of limits yeah. what you can use. And, and anyway, yeah. so there's a description on the website on the blog that'll come out later. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's not really where we're going with this. The thing. number one thing to remember about warts is that they are highly contagious. Yeah. And, you know, people say, well, I was exposed. I mean, fine. Wonderful. You have a great immune system. Okay. And you didn't get them. But if your immune system ever gets taxed by stress or something else, then you know, little kids that get them all over. It's because they're picking at them and then touching other parts of their skin or touching other kids. And, and yeah, and they <laughs> oh, tend yuck. to spread really quickly. So wart pickers, long sleeves <laughs> and, and my favorite actual treatment for um, warts. I use the essential oils, deliverance, simplicity, the ones we're going to talk about later. No more. no more. There's, there's several to choose from, um, but I like to cover them with something, either a band aid. um, this is really horrible. My mom's going to hit me for this one. Super glue. <laughs> I shall try to refrain. <laughs> she probably shouldn't put chemicals on your skin or duct tape. And for some reason, duct brand duct tape works the best. But just, I think it, it prevents them from picking at it, which prevents the spread of it. But it also cuts off their oxygen supply. That is something. And that is you huge. Know, if you search or that all over Clear the place. Clear polish. Every website that I looked at mentioned duct tape as a solution to warts. And I think so. that's why. I think it's because it cuts off the oxygen. And it also keeps the oil on there. It doesn't, it's not um, dissipating off as fast. It stays there longer. So I have found that that works much faster. Anyway. Something else <laughs> to remember about them spreading is that virus, little guys, they love warm, moist environments. Yeah. So if you have someone in your family with a plantar wart or any other kind of wart, teaching them to scrub the shower out afterward with the, some essential oils <laughs> to help yeah. stop the spread. <laughs> stop the spread through the family. Yep. You know, um, warts are fond of embedding themselves in injured skin in any kind of irritated place. So, if you suffer from psoriasis or any of those skin diseases, be particularly careful not to expose yourself to warts. And one thing that I found interesting was the incubation period. One to eight months. Yep. So you can't even, oh, dang you, you gave me your warts because they could have been gone for eight months of your life. You know? yep. <laughs> so that's kind of scary. If someone in your family had warts eight months ago, the virus could still be living in your bathtub unless you've des <laughs> essential oiled it too. <laughs> essential oiled <laughs> towels right. or razor blades or you know, yep, all sandals, shoes worn in public places like spas and locker rooms need to be dealt with when you get home. Yep. <laughs> so. Spray them down with. Spray them down with essential oils. Do your laundry with essential oils. Well, now I have to tell you, this advice is not practical. I ran around barefooted all of my life, and I never took care of my shoes, which is probably why I got a planter wart. But, hey, I'd rather deal with the wart than run around all the time with wearing shoes, shoes everywhere. So. I, don't, I don't do swimming pool, restrooms, bath. No, shoes. Shoes are a necessary part of going into those How places. How can you be my child? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Okay. We already kind of talked a little bit about treating or ignoring them and they need to be treated. I, we think you can treat them at home. You can do it herbally, but if it's not going away, if a person has a ton of warts, though, they're not prone else. to pick at them. 
they're not likely to spread them to someone else. I mean, it's not like just touching a person with a wart somewhere on their body is going to do that. No, it's not. It takes more to, than that. It needs so. to be picked open and yeah. All right, let's get into the fun part, which is what to do about them. And we're going to start with essential oils. Um, a couple other things we'll cover real quick at the end, but um, we're starting with the oils because oils are what we love. So the first one is tea tree, which is um, melaleuca. All members yep. of the melaleuca Any. family are recognized as effective yep. for treating warts. Actually. They kill the virus. They weaken it. They help to rupture that protective outer shell. They rupture the shell. protective outer shell called the cyst yep. of a virus. The only things that work against any kind of virus do that. And, man, tea tree oils are right up there. It's also a <laughs> tissue regenerator, which it makes is. it a sensible choice for working with warts. Um, I personally hate the smell of tea tree. I do too. So it wouldn't be my first choice. But <laughs> I don't like the smell. It is a cheap choice too. Tea tree oil is inexpensive. inexpensive. So uh, if you have them all over and you're using a lot, <laughs> that might be a great choice. Nyuli is another one. And this is um, now, I like of, the smell of Nyuli. I like it too. And it is a member of the tea tree family. It's a little so, bit, I think it's a little bit more expensive if I remember right. I don't have any idea. I don't, I'm not sure, but I think that. so. I'd probably be more apt to choose this one. It's also an immune system booster, which is um, a huge plus. I love Naya Uli. I blend with it wherever I can and yep. use it whenever I can. <laughs> it, it helps a lot with Lighter that immune scent. system deficiency though. Yep. So if, if a person continually falls victim to warts, Building that immune system is important, and Nyuli might be a little and bit better. It dissolves the wart. I mean, how yep. can you ask for more? Get rid of the wart and strengthen your immune system at, at the same, same time. time. So, yep. Nyuli doesn't smell like tea tree. Tea tree, to it me. doesn't. It's it part has of the tea a tree family, scent. but it is not. Yep. <laughs> okay. Cinnamon bark and clove butter, kind of, they're kind of the same. They're both spice oils, and they're both um, considered very effective treatments for warts. They're also both very dare I use the word caustic. Those are very strong oils. Dilute. Dilute with a carrier oil, but then be careful because the carrier oil gives something to feed. Not so bad as a fungus, but I don't like to feed anything with my with, carrier oil. With essential oils, we're better <laughs> off, I coconut, mean, maybe. with warts and this type of thing, you're better off using your essential oils neat. And cinnamon bark and clove, some places you could put those neat I, little kids their skin might be a little too soft I, i'd be careful with those two but they are extremely they are very effective. <laughs> effective they're very very strong so, so put one drop on a little round band-aid stick it over the water and check it in a couple of hours to see if you're getting if skin you're irritating irritation. the skin or if <laughs> we can do the rest of them that way or whatever yeah. we've got going on just don't ignore right. the whole little four-year-old for a whole eight-hour day i just totally forgot about our comments hang on oh my no well, i can't see him so you know. okay i have one on the bottom on my right foot you said to soak it in deliverance and when did we say that deliverance is what i use but to, in, we're going to get to deliverance now i would use naya uli really i would yeah i've used deliverance or i'd so use many deliverance times. and add a few drops of naya uli Nyla, to, just for the smell <laughs> no just because it's so darn effective at rebuilding I've used so. Deliverance many, many times. On I have too. We used it for years before we ever heard yep. of Naya Uli. It is so. an absolutely legitimate choice. That's the thing with essential oils. They have so many constituents and so many different uses that there are so many of them that would work. Um, Deliverance is a nice blend. So it's going to have a lot of different things in it that would work. It's, it even has the tea tree and a couple of the ones we've talked about. So There's another one called Manuka here. Yep. That we're gonna, I like the one. smell of Manuka. And it's a also distant, part of the tea tree family. Distant cousin, yeah. <laughs> it's not as close <laughs> as Nyuli, but it is in there. Um, Manuka is actually found in another blend that we're going to talk about, not Deliverance, but one called Simplicity, which is actually, um, we'll, we'll get there, but it's actually built for fighting viruses. Yeah. So Manuka is another excellent choice, but here I would use it in the Simplicity blend rather than by itself. Yeah. It's a potent immune stimulant as well. And um, Manuka... It's just, I mean, it's a really good one for killing bacteria. It does have yep, gram, both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So, yep. you know, we're kind of reaching out a little. You know, there's no studies to say that Manuka would work against that. But everything else I know about this particular well, oil. It works well in the blend. Makes yep. me think. Uh huh. Good. Manuka good is addition. probably the first one we've talked about. We've never actually tried on warts, but <laughs> it's supposed to be really good. And it's a nice smelling one. So, I like Manuka. All right. Okay. Now there's a couple of butterfly blends, and we kind of already talked about deliverance, but we'll probably get there a little bit more. Um, there's one called Mela Plus, and this one to me smells like tea tree. So, even though I, <laughs> I I whimped it down a little on the smell by adding Nyuli to it, <laughs> it is very strong, and it it ha because it's a blend, it has other things in it like rosemary. It's got some lemon myrtle, some mound savory. It's got some other things in it which 
really help to boost those antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral properties. So it is a good choice. It's also a fairly cheap choice. But again, it smells like tea tree. So if you it don't has like tea tree, a, a nerve called mountain savory in it, which yeah. is one of the highest antioxidant oils there is, which yeah. limits the growth of anything, which will then, if it happens to be a cancer causing wart, it will reduce your risk of that spreading. So yeah. simplicity is a good one to consider. No, this is. This Not is some Meloplus because of yeah. the mountain savory in it, yeah. Okay, and Deliverance, and Deliverance is just, I mean, we've used it, we know that it works, but it is our big guns. When anybody gets sick, yes, it gets and I diffused. added Nioli to it, too, in case you put and mountain case you put. savory. I had a good time playing with the Deliverance before. So, yeah, that one is just one that <laughs> should just be used for everything, anything viral, anything bacterial, anything, any. Yeah, like I said, she yeah. says Deliverance is the one we've always used, but now that there's Nioli and Kasia put Mount Savory in the Meloplus, I don't know, it'd be a toss-up somewhere to <laughs> well, follow the If the I were ever test. to develop a wart, though, I would use Simplicity. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is because Simplicity was actually um, developed to fight the HSV1 and herpes 2 simplex. herpes simplex. And the way that virus works, it works similar to warts. It actually grabs onto the nervous system and travels along it until it establishes a home base. And then from there, it spreads out and you'll get breakouts. And so simplicity actually follows that back. It, it'll kill it at the source and then it follows the neural pathways back and kills it at where it began. And because I have had issues with um, the herpes simplex, I've done cold sores on my face to the point where I almost had a scar. So, yes, <laughs> great yeah. fun. I so I, I would kind of probably start there. I got kind of confusing up there about which one has the Niuli in, but they can look it up. In Actually, <laughs> Niuli is in, was in two of them. Meloplus and Simplicity, if my mm -hmm. memory is And it's also in Deliverance correctly. now. So it's going to be I'm in all the I'm not sure it's in Deliverance. You're not? No. See, it says addition of to Meloplus. I don't oh, think it's in delivery. So it might not be. Yeah, that's where I think well, I confused them. I lucky think thing is you can go on the website and you can actually go to <laughs> Nioli and it'll give you a list of what blends it's in. <laughs> Where's we the oil book? I was just going to look it up. I don't know. We used to have one sitting out here by us. I'm but pretty sure it's only moment. in. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so how do you use an essential oil for a wart? Mm -hmm. We like to use them neat. And if you're not familiar with that term neat, <laughs> it, it's just a really fancy way of saying to put it on straight. Most of the oils that we've talked about today could be could be irritants to the skin if you have sensitive skin. So it's really important to just get it only on the wart. Put a little drop. I, I like those little round bandages. One little drop of oil in the middle of the bandage. Stick it right smack dab over the wart. Or duct tape. And, but yeah, duct tape would work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the beauty of duct tape is in that bandage, the drop of oil tends to spread and you're getting it on the skin around mm -hmm. the duct tape. It doesn't do that. It just sits right smack you let on it, the wart. You let it, you put it on the skin and let it kind of absorb in and the skin dry enough. The duct tape will stick to it and off you go. Yeah. I think so, I'm not going to, yeah, yeah. I've never tried I don't know why the thing. duct tape brand works better than regular duct tape, but I suspect it's some chemical in the glue. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, maybe it's not the best idea, but it does work. Okay. Well, and and it, you got to realize that, you're fighting a virus, mm -hmm. okay? It might be fairly easy to kill the virus, and that's the first step. You you got to eradicate the virus, and as Valerie just described, viruses tend to travel along nerve Neural endings, pathways. and they get into the bloodstream. And it's not you're not going to kill the whole virus by putting a drop of oil on a piece of duct tape. You're going to have to. You're going to have to things. do some things to fight it wherever else it lives, too. If it's fairly new and it hasn't had a chance to establish a base through the neural pathways, you might beat it with just essential oils. But there are definitely some other things that you want to try. But even if you do, you know, people say, well, I've been putting this on my wart and, and nothing's happening. Well, maybe it happened. Maybe you've killed the virus week. and you're well winning. But you've got to dissolve that hard patch of, bump of skin. And that is going to take time. And the oils we've talked about both kill the virus and dissolve and rebuild the skin. But this is not a, an, overnight an overnight thing. thing. This <laughs> takes know? a little bit of time. And it's hard with children, you know. They, they think, well, yep. hard. everybody's supposed to work overnight. Um, another way that you can do it is, like, say a child has them all over their fingers. I don't know why I can't see them all. But they had 40 or 50 <laughs> of them all over their fingers. You can't put Imagine. that many band-aids and whatever on. <laughs> but you can put the, the oils in a bowl of water, and you're not diluting them. Your water is actually a magnifier for oils, and you can soak the entire hand or the entire foot or whatever in water three or four times a day. And it'll absorb. It'll absorb into the bloodstream. It'll absorb in. You're 
you're keeping it from setting up house somewhere else while you're doing it too. A so. glass or a metal bowl, not plastic because essential oils are strong. They'll break that plastic down and then you'll carry it into this body through yeah, the skin. Bad couple. idea. Mm -hmm. So glass or metal are our preferred soaking bowls or pots. Glass far away. <laughs> um, adding some apple cider vinegar to that soak can be a really good idea because it helps to alkalize the body, which is always helpful a good idea. when you're fighting a virus. Yep. So, so um, another uh, couple of things that, I mean, apple cider vinegar is just, you could take it as a capsule to, you could put it directly on the ward if you're not soaking them, you're just putting oils on neat. It's just a, a great way to use it. Um, if you are going to use a carrier oil for one of the stronger blends, let's say maybe it's a kid with sensitive skin and it's irritating it, so you decided to use a carrier oil, coconut is a great one. And the reason for that is because it's antimicrobial and it's antifungal anti properties. So yep. it, it's fairly safe one to use for that type of thing. Okay. Yep. So it also helps to soften the skin and break up that dead, oh. whatever. Okay. There is in the blog, I'm not going to read it to you, a recipe for um, oil to water to apple cider vinegar ratio to coconut that makes a good basic makes recipe good for soaking. So, and that will come out on the blog here we'll back shortly. Up a minute. We, oh, did I skip something? I don't know. We're we prepare all these wonderful notes. But. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking here about one more lineup. Oh, sorry. It's been too long since I wrote this thing. <laughs> uh, okay, salicylic acid. Okay, that's apple cider apple vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Okay. Yep. All right. It helps the, the things dry up and plunk away. So. Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Um, some other things, and this one to me is the most important. If you have a patch of them, a breakout, um, even if maybe you only had just one plant or wart, I would have them on Lomatium tincture. I Lomatium tincture would. is a very powerful antibiotic, antiviral herb, and it just seems to go in there and cleans out that blood and gets rid of... Lomatium is also a and, great stomach herb, and it makes the blood more alkaline, and which means the body will go in a, a gentle de detox all yep. by its little self. I mean, it's, it improves Lomatium immune function. Lomatium is an underused, undervalued, <laughs> underknown herb. One of the coolest <laughs> things about Lomatium is it helps the body to alkalize itself. That's yep. huge. That, that's huge. So, yep. um, so this is not one I would I would uh, take in a little bit, you know, once in a while. I, if I had warts, and I would take this quite seriously. I would take it eight to 12 drops. I would take it three times a day and I would take it till the second bottle was gone. <laughs> Even after all the warts you know, were gone, just to make I sure. Would. That, yeah, it's not going to hurt you. Or Especially if I had any digestive issues at all. That might yeah. Respond to it, so. Okay. So another weird one that's out there that oh, I just tends to work. Had as a to banana include peel. This one. <laughs> the reason I had to include it is because my grandma tried that once on, I don't know which one of my brothers. It's a potassium theory. The banana peel contains high amounts of potassium. Um, to me, that is, I mean, it may work. I don't know. I've never tried it. But to me, it's small guns when I've got big ones at my fingertips. Exactly. And <laughs> I always wondered because, you know, I had that one one brother who had that one wart. And I remember grandma rubbing with banana peel. And I remember being amazed that any of us children ever got warts at all because of Uncle Lee and his banana. His banana fish. <laughs> we had a banana uncle, my mother forbidding from feeding us sugar. So he um, fed Vicky us says, cute new glasses. Oh, <laughs> and she also asked us Save to spell. the ones on the table at the moment. She asked us to spell Lomation, but thankfully April did it for us. Oh, so okay. <laughs> right, we got it. Okay. All right, another one, and this one I probably yeah. would do. I'd probably do it along with the essential oils. Um, is garlic. Garlic. In yes. some form, either I'd pick up more of it in my diet, I'd eat a little more pizza. It's a good excuse. Me, I just <laughs> go for the green olive stuffed with garlic. Yeah, those things. Some form of garlic into your diet or a garlic capsules if that's the only way you can get it down. <laughs> yeah. Adding garlic to your diet will help eradicate the virus too. It will. Yeah. Main, the main ingredient of garlic, Allison, ruptures that protective shell. And, and they're for a lot of years applying a little clove of garlic. Breaking to it open. Wart. But here again, be careful. One person I recommended that to 25 years ago um, didn't cut the garlic. They kind of split the clove in half, stuck it across, which put a lot of garlic against the child's sensitive skin. Yeah. And it burned it. I mean, the garlic belongs garlic is on strong. the wart. And so here again, put it on with duct tape so it doesn't wiggle. No. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, oh, dear. A bandage to hold the garlic in place. I don't know that would do it for me. It's very strong. So, yeah, it, it will burn. It'll burn normal skin. So. And garlic oil, is it is available in this essential oil. Um it is 
hellaciously strong. It's not even kept in the main facility of Butterfly. Because and, and they put on two gloves to open it. And then one, one person opens it, hands it to the other gloved person. So then anything got in her hands doesn't get on. The, yeah, it's it, double back, it, double wrapped to the post office screams every time we have to mail one. Um, they're extremely strong. And to use it to treat warts, you better be making sure you're only getting it I tell it on you, I'd put one drop on a Q-tip and, and then I would put that against the wart <laughs> and your house will smell like garlic for at least two days I do it outside yes <laughs> so and your hands if you <laughs> it's strong I'd almost be more for buying some garlic at the grocery store mincing it up and, and putting one yeah. squishing the oil out of that and you, yeah I, I promise I you garlic will work but you know it's but it's better. strong but there isn't a lot of different websites you can check they recommend putting petroleum jelly vaseline around it's, it they, so that, and when you it's put to cut the oxygen supply but petroleum, well they're doing it so that it protects the skin around the wart mm -hmm. from these caustic things like the garlic but please remember that vaseline is a petroleum you don't want to absorb and, petroleum through your skin yeah let's not do too much probably of that. not the best <laughs> okay. idea okay um other fun things some people were recommending orange, orange peel, peel the same way as banana peels and the sap of a dandelion that white milky substance we've never tried any of these but because they, they're just so much weaker than oil so say, strong that that's where we go <laughs> anyway dandelion um well and all these things that i tried on my plantar wart before we got into essential oils and before i fixed my tailbone yeah. they didn't actually get rid of it it would you know, it would look like it was gone for a year or two and then back it would pop i so. haven't found a wart we can't get rid of since we started using the no. lomatium tincture though yeah lomatium tincture and a couple of oils yeah so not a another huge thing to add to your diet would be vitamin c um vitamin c is fairly easy to get a hold of but not always easy to absorb my favorite source of vitamin c is rose hips tincture rose hips by far now you can make rose hips into a tea but as a tincture it's just easy drink it add it to your i used to throw rose hips into every tea tincture. and juice and thing that you guys ever <laughs> used yep. to drink <laughs> it's an immune bu building thing and it it's essential for healthy skin which is what you're trying to rebuild after you've done a wound work. healing so that you know yep. it recovers from and then vitamin e helps with skin elasticity so taking vitamin e will will help that dry little thing that's left over even after the virus is dead that bump may Spoke stick around a hole for a in a time. capsule but yeah, i'm always saying this vitamin e don't get the fake the good one is yep. d alpha the fake one is d l alpha Please get a good one. A, Make sure a worthless man-made vitamin E will cost you a fortune and do um, no good whatsoever. Butterfly actually sells one, but I don't know if they sell it under... Well, they do have vitamin E capsules, but yeah. they actually... A cheaper way to do it would be wheat germ oil. Wheat germ I think oil. they have a two ounce of the wheat germ oil, and that would be a cheap way to do it. But if you do get as a as a capsule, that's fine. You just poke a hole in it. You can use the same capsule several times. Well, you can poke a hole in it, squirt some on your work, and then swallow the rest. That's true. You could do that. I, I've <laughs> done it, that, actually. Get it done twice here. Yep. Okay, so vitamin so. E and vitamin C are good to help with rebuilding. Um, I think that's about all that we've got for you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Common suggestions. Um, we really appreciate it. This this um, will be live on our blog, and it will be on our YouTube channel. If you're reading this, you try some of these things, come back, comment, Tell other people, hey, this worked for me. This is what I, I had, you know, three warts on my hand. I just had one planter wart on my foot. Or tell them what you're dealing with and what you used and what worked. And, and let's share our knowledge with each other. So thanks for tuning in and listening to us. And feel free to watch this lots of times and tag your friends on it. <laughs>